Hi Fox, how are you doing? Uh, the Gashimo Memorial is over and the winner was decided on the very last round as it was known already because the two co-leaders Carwan and Carlson were playing one against each other. Carlson was white today and he was facing Carwana who already beat him in the first part of the tournament. And well, a draw between them uh, would, be, would, be, would be benefiting uh, Carlson, so he, he would win thanks to the tiebreak if the game was a draw. So that's interesting to know uh, regarding uh, the, choice, uh, the choice of the opening. Let us see what happened. Carlson was white, he plays Queen's Pawn, Knight F3, and after G6 he plays G3. I mean, Caron always, almost always plays the Grunfeld against 1d4, but Carlson, you know, he plays all kinds of systems. Although in this, in this tournament he's been playing, he's been favoring 1d4 more than other things. Bishop g7, Bishop g2, and c5 playing uh, more or less in, in Grunfeld style. And c3, I mean, not the most common move if... And it, it is interesting, as I said, it's it's interesting uh, knowing that uh, draw was favoring Magnus today. Uh, it's interesting that Carlson is checking what is Carona is what Carona is willing to do. I mean, is he uh, want, uh, does he want really to go for the victory, or uh, he's uh, happy with the draw and just take the second place? Why am I saying it? Because well, as it was stated during the live comment. Uh, between top GMs, the situation arising after C takes C takes D5, and well, Swigler is probably the one who is more who has most authority in the world to talk about this because he's a big, big Grunfeld expert. Between top GMs, this position is considered to be uh, almost the end of the game because the position is very, very drawish, uh, rather dry, and well, this is supposed to be like a draw for. A silent draw for for two, for both players. So Carlson was kind of checking, I guess, if Carona wanted to go for this and be happy having won this mini match against the world champion and take the second place, or did he want to play for a victory, as the Italian player in fact did? So Carona played d5, in fact, uh, sacrificing already a piece as early as on the move on the move fifth, and well. In this way, he's saying he clearly wants to go for the victory, he wants a game, and he doesn't want to give Carlson the tournament victory that easily with a draw. So, kudos to him. Carlson takes the pawn. I'm sure he had prepared this course. Now, both players castle. And, well, not so many games in this line. But there is, for instance, a game between Kamsky and uh, Karyakin in 2009. Where the American GM won. Also, there is a game played by uh, the Dutch GM, strong GM, Erwin Lamy, uh, played last year against, I think, the international master from Holland as well, Bok. So, some games here, but not a very well known position for GMs, between GMs, not very much played at least. Well, Black here plays a5 with the idea to stop White from playing b4 very early. And solidifying his extra pawn on c5. Bishop e3. I think this is the novelty of the game. But okay, not very important theoretically, I guess. Because this position is not likely to be seen that frequently. Because white's approach is... I mean, black would have equalized as early as in the move fist as we saw. See. So this is just a just a one one game preparation, I guess, for top GMs. But anyway, why just Carson does just defends his pawn and keeps developing. Knight c6 and knight a3. Now Caruana plays a4. This idea is, I guess, to stop queen b3. And well, more or less gaining space in the in the king side and the queen side so far. Probably it was more it would more or less turn transpose, but maybe. Black wins a little bit, like a half tempi in this line. If he plays knight g4, attacking the bishop first, and if the bishop goes, I mean, white doesn't want, of course, to double up his pawns here on five to give up the bishop pair, so he plays something like bishop d2. Now he could try a4 with the same idea, and after h3, knight f6, the bishop could go back to e3, but black 
it could be argued that black has almost won a tempi. White has played h3. I say almost because it could be a useful move to stop Fjordar bishop or knight g4 moves. But okay. Probably the differences aren't that great. Up to knight a3, Harwana just plays a4. Carlson plays queen c1, leaving the d file for the rook to come here, posing black king, and also having the idea of controlling this big diagonal, this dark square diagonal, bishop a6, maybe an idea. Harwana takes full control of the center with all his pins, uh, all his pawns playing e5. He has really a uh, Cool pawns in the center, but still his composition is to be proved because white position. I mean, white has had to give up some uh, something, some things uh, for taking the pawn. His his uh, development is not that harmonious, but still white's position looks really solid one, and black certainly has to prove some real compensation. I, I mean, I think there is some compensation because black has a good development, good central squares. But maybe at this level, at this top GM level, mm, probably not enough to cause problems to white. So on long terms, this is uh, favorable for white, it, uh, at least at these top GMs. Once again, I'm sure that in amateurs' hands, I would mm, black would be winning lots of games in this position because he can be much more active. Now rook d1, posing queen in the d file. In e7, very normal. And well, knight b5 is an interesting move. It may seem that uh, may maybe knight d6 is even, a, even idea, an idea here, I don't know. Maybe it was a possibility depending on what would black play. But even on b5, uh, as strange as it could, is may it may look, uh, the knight is well situated because it can't be chased away that easily. I mean, there is no c or a pawn of black chasing this knight away. And it's not very likely that black will use tempis to chase this knight, so it's controlling a couple of important squares, d6, uh, d4, and well, this knight I think is 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 as well placed an interesting move. Caruana just keeps developing queen e6. Now knight g5 is played, attacking the bishop here, and of course the bishop on the white bishop on g2 now is more has more freedom to attack the d4 d5 pawn. Your bishop g4 attacks the e2 pawn and white plays knight d6. Knight d6. Some interesting things start, start to happen. Uh, the first move you have to calculate in this position, I guess, is uh, why it just is just white letting black recapture a pawn on e2. Was it possible? Well, turns out that after bishop takes e2, White has the very interesting exchange sacrifice on d5. Rook takes there, and after knight takes, bishop takes. White has uh, really some serious pressure with his active light square piece. Both bishops and knights are really uh, occupying lo uh, lots of squares in the center, lots of uh, lots of space, and are uh, targeting us at, uh, at least for the time being f7. And well. Uh, really causing some some uh, some problems to black here. So this is was this wasn't probably very playable. So after uh, knight b6, Caruana just chases away that knight with h6. Knight goes back to f3, and Fabiano plays king a7, showing his aggressive intentions. I guess to play f7 sometime in King's Indian defense style try to create his compensation in the king side. White plays h3, bishop goes back to e6, and Carlson just plays b4, just uh, completing his uh, the semantic process of the c5, c5, c5 pawn, and once again uh, challenging Caruana to show his compensation for the pawn. Well, he takes on b3, a takes, rooks are exchanged on a1, and knight d4 is played here with some intentions. Cordonice is well placed here on the central square. It's somehow challenging the interesting knight on d6 of white, and it's uh, having an eye on this potential weak c3 and c5 pawns of white. 
also leaving uh, black with the possibility to play f5 if he pleases so to start uh, some attack on the center slash king side here well there are more than one uh, there's more than a possibility for white Carlsen chose to play knight d2 for instance if he takes only four this is uh, this is favorable for black actually because after e takes the knight is attacked it goes somewhere and f5 and well black has some uncoordinated piece the, the rook the queen may be even considered not a great piece here and white will have to face the really ugly f4 move uh, after which uh, black side really has some compensation really in this position maybe for the first time in the game Caruana would have some real compensation for the pawn, but of course uh, Magnus didn't play this. Uh, he plays well. Of course, I mean before was also possible. Maybe a five could be played, but he plays knight d2. He just uh, threatens to take on four, so he's forcing Black to play something. And I know, uh, having seen that Caruana is in ambitious mode, he has to go for something. He forces him to play the f5 move. An ambitious aggressive move, but well, the computer doesn't like it. Uh, it, mm, it considers that it's leaving uh, too many things in the air for black. And from now on, Carlsen really will play uh, very precisely. Let us see what was seemingly, at least uh, looking at the engine, was the best continuation for black. It is just recommending to take on d6 c takes and take the pawn back i mean the idea of white is to play here i guess knight c4 uh, of course the pawn cannot take as it is pinned the queen is hanging on d6 so the queen must go back and um, well if it goes for instance to d8 black can white can choose between putting some pressure with bishop c5 it's a clear position i guess lots of pieces attacked here or even bishop at d6 is an option, the knight is guarding there. After knight c4, by the way, uh, queen e7, not that easy to play as d5 would be hanging, so bishop takes d5 here. So, well, this was probably the main line to be considered, but Caruana went more aggressively here. He went a5. Now, Carlson plays really very precisely showing that black really hasn't uh, that much compensation first he takes only four he takes now once again a four is kind of a threat but Carlson keeps cool he plays queen b1 defends b3 and well places the queen on the white square diagonal which uh, even if there are uh, three black pawns there right now it may be an issue most later of course, Caruana plays f4, bishop goes d2, e3, and bishop goes back to e1 to defend. And this position may be may seem dangerous for white in an amateur amateur's hand, I'm sure, once again. This could be very, very dangerous. But Carlsen shows that there isn't much danger for a strong player like him. He just keeps calm. Uh, Caruana plays bishop f5, attacking the queen. Of course, there was an option to take on f2 with check, but after bishop takes, it doesn't seem there is really that much for black. If f takes g3, bishop takes g3, queen g5. White could play queen d3, just defending everything. And if bishop a5, e4, blocking that bishop, cementing his center, center and well, uh, white is still uh, wondering what is white, black's serious compensation here, I guess. It happened a little bit different. Caruana played bishop f5 right away after bishop e1. So Carlsen plays queen c1. Of course, it could be played, I guess, knight takes, g takes, but these four black pawns really may have some practical chances to annoy white. But okay, queen c1. Now h5. Caruana keeps pushing his pawns. He has really nothing that, uh, nothing much to do, nothing else to do. So Carlsen here takes on e3, 
if f takes c3, after knight takes f5, an intermediate move to avoid a later bishop c2 and rook c, he could take on e3. The point is, is after just a little detail, is after f takes c3, he plays queen takes c3 right away. The bishop h6, queen f3, black has this a little annoying bishop c2 move and uh, rook uh, has only one square, a1 square to go to. The difference is that, as I said, he just plays first knight takes f5, so he takes now on e3. And the point is, well, as after bishop h6, queen f3, there is no more bishop c2 annoying this rook. But okay. This was good, of course, for white. So Karona plays f takes g3, but bishop takes on g3. Queen g5 is seemingly an active move. It attack, attacks the bishop, attacks the pawn there. But now e4 attacks, I mean, offers a queen exchange and also attacks the bishop on f5. Karona trades the pieces, but not the queens, the light square, the light bishops here. He takes on g3, and with Carlson here, plays precise. He first chases away the queen with queen uh, with the rook d3 move, so that it goes to h4. Not that an active move as it would be uh, if he played first. He takes f5, g takes f5, and now if he plays rook d3, the queen could go back to g6, still having the pin. On the king, and not, it would not be on h4 as we will see it happen in the game. Queen takes g3, he plays, and plays rook d3. Queen goes to h4, now he takes on e5, g takes f5, and the queen is not on g6 where it would be still uh, pinning the bishop against the queen, king. Some little details that uh, make us appreciate, uh, appreciate how strong these players are. E4, the move that closes down the center and leaves black uh, with uh, little to proof for the, for the pawn. Remember, Carlson won a pawn in the op opening and he uh, still uh, hasn't given it back. F takes of E4 was played. In case of F, sorry, in case of F4, could be played Queen D1, completely controlling the potentially important f3 square and black is running out of resources here to attack to create annoyings f takes e4, bishop takes with a check king h8, queen e3 regrouping forces now the rook goes to f4 bishop goes back to g2 defending here h3 getting out of the dangerous e4 I guess dangerous e4 square Going back to e7, queen e2 is attacking the h5 pawn, going back to h4, and b4, defending his pawn. Black plays e4, he caron and sacrifices yet another pawn to go for all or nothing. He knows that uh, playing slowly and just waiting, Carlson will eventually uh, get a pass pawn on the queen side and uh, will crush him, leaving him without space or something. So he sacrifices another pawn to bring the knight on c6 into the game and try to create something, some, try to get something going on. Knight takes e4 and knight goes to e5, reactivating the knight. Rook d5, there is some subtle, subtle threat of causing problems to black with the h5 square, attacking with the, both the rook and the queen. There are some issues there, so king g8 is played by Caruana, but Carlson just keeps pushing his pawns. B5. The rook f5. He plays c6. And so he has a dangerous pass pawn on the c file already. Queen goes to e7. Now Carano must uh, go back with his pieces to try to defend. But knight d6 attacking uh, the rook. Rook goes to g5. And knight b5, relocating pieces. The knight would probably like to go to a strong d4 square, or even he's uh, threatening to uh, push the pawn to c7. Queen goes to d6. I mean, taking on c6 with the knight wasn't that great, it seems, because 
queen takes, knight takes, and the rook takes on g5. So queen e6 was played here, and well, Carlson here had uh, lots of ways of winning this, I guess. The, the advantage is great, is really a great one. He plays rook b8 check, king a7, and he checks on 4 After rook g6, now that everything is tied up in the black's camp, the knight is pinned, the queen would be hanging, hanging, more or less hanging, or at least would be exchanged. The rook is pinned, so now he plays c7, just threatening to to win by queening. Queen a6 was played already quite 46 moves have been played here. Quite a long game. And Caruana is looking for the last tricks. Carlson promotes another queen on c8 and queen a1 check. And really White has to be careful here, not to be careless and just move Instinct, uh, automatically to queen, queen with the king to h2 because this would be probably the blunder of the century. Uh, having an advantage of a queen and a pawn, uh, Blacky, uh, White is getting mated here with knight f3 check, and it doesn't matter what White does, uh, he's checkmated. If bishop takes f3, mate on g1. And if queen takes f3 mate with the bishop on the dark squares, bishop takes checkmate. So, of course, Magnus wasn't going to fall for this, but at least Fabiano had to try. Magnus plays king f2, and after queen b2, he goes king b1. Fabiano resigned the game, no more resources. And <laughs> white is up a queen here. In case you didn't notice so well, uh, Carlson wins both the game and the tournament. Although it didn't uh, go that smooth for him, he had ups and downs, he lost a couple of games in the first part of the tournament. But still, a great tournament for the world champion who had, who had the guts to come back and win lots of games to secure the first place in the strong Kashimo Memorial. Congratulations to the world champion. Thanks for watching.